Hey, I'm Jazz. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This week's video, we are going to be baking a Tres Leches cake. This is for my cousin. He is going to a potluck, so by request, he's asked me to make him a cake so that he can bring. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. And without further ado, let's get to baking. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is cream together some butter and sugar. I have my scale here. I have my butter right here. It's unsalted butter, and we're going to need half a cup or 113 grams. I'm then gonna be adding one cup of sugar. Hi, how are you? I'd also like to preface by saying that this is not my recipe. I've had this recipe for quite a few years now, but because I transfer, this feels weird. Because I transfer all of the recipes that really work for me onto a Google Slides, I just don't put the link because I obviously don't need them because I write down the steps and I write down the ingredients of how much I need. So I don't know where this recipe is from. If you recognize it, let me know where it's from. But otherwise, I'd just like to preface by saying this is not my recipe. It's just the one that I always use and it always turns out great. Now time to bring in ye old KitchenAid. We're going to cream this until it is light and fluffy and it's a little bit whiter in color. Just scraping down the sides one more time. I have been mixing this for about three to four minutes and it is definitely fluffier. So now we are going to be adding the eggs. We're gonna be using five eggs. I'd also like to say that you can definitely use a hand mixer uh, or a whisk, but again, if you do not have the arm strength like myself, I would refrain using a whisk. Try to get your hands on a hand mixer or again, if you have a KitchenAid, use a KitchenAid. One thing about this recipe is that it really isn't hard. It's a very simple and straightforward recipe. The only thing is, it's just a little bit time consuming, but if you have the time, by all means. You put in one egg at a time and then mix just until the egg is incorporated and then repeat the process another four times. At the second egg, I typically like to scrape down my bowl again. I am so glad that I am using a full tray of eggs because I dead ass just forgot how many eggs I put in. Last egg, scrape down the bowl. Cool. I know she looks like a bowl of scrambled eggs, but she will get together, I promise. Now I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of vanilla but vanilla, like we know, is one of those ingredients where you just don't measure. That's enough. <laughs> Wonderful. Now that that's done, we are gonna move on to the flour. Now with the flour, I put it in something separate along with the baking powder because they are supposed to be sifted into a clean bowl. So that is what I'm gonna do. And this is just an easier way of doing it. So I'm gonna get my sifter. Now this is the other time consuming portion. I haven't done it any other way, but I do remember the recipe telling me to take two tablespoons at a time, putting it, mixing it, making sure it's incorporated and continuing to do that until there's basically nothing left. And I've done it every single time that I make this cake, so I will continue to do it. You can choose not to do it at your own discretion, but I choose the safe side. You can see that slowly but surely everything is incorporating and starting to look a lot more like a cake batter. Now, you don't have to keep turning on and off your KitchenAid, but I just find myself always getting everything everywhere when I don't turn off my KitchenAid. So to avoid less mess, I turn it off every single time that I have to add more flour. Gonna bring this down take our spatula again and now scrape down the sides so that everything can get one last mix. Done. 
Okay, I just went to go double check my recipe. It was actually half a teaspoon of vanilla, but what's a tablespoon of vanilla really gonna do to you? That is legitimately the entire cake batter recipe. It's so simple and just like the tiniest bit of time consuming, but like this is quite frankly, one of the easiest things that you could possibly make. Right now I have my oven preheating to 350 and I'm just gonna scrape down the bowl, making sure that everything is fully incorporated one last time. And then we're gonna transfer it to a pan and transfer it to the oven. So everything is mixed in. I got these like little cake pans, these aluminum cake pans from the dollar store. This is ideally what you want when you're making at the stitches. It's quite thick. So when you're putting in the milks, you know that there's something sturdy and there's something pliable that you're working with when it comes to your cake. And these are just so convenient. It comes in a pack of two and the oven just beeped. So it is ready for the cake. Gotcha, bitch. Just gonna spread this up the sides just a little bit. That is our cake. Gonna place her in the oven. All right, our cake is in the oven. It is gonna be baking for 55 minutes to an hour. As I said, time consuming cake. It really is just like having to wait around. I will see you guys in an hour. All right, everyone. It's been a few hours, I'm not gonna lie. But the time has come and the cake is pretty much cold. Now all we have to do is make the holes, make the little milk concoction, and top it off with some whipped cream. If you have triple phobia, you might wanna skip this part. I don't know how severe it's gonna be for you, but basically I'm taking a toothpick. This is not a toothpick. I'm taking a chopstick and poking holes all around the entire cake. Now, normally, I would do this right when the cake comes out, but after I do it, then I let the cake cool a little bit more and like it cools faster once you've put holes in it as soon as it comes out. But that would mean that I'd have to stop the filming, then refilm. And to be perfectly candid, I just can be asked. So here we are just doing everything. One take Drake. This is honestly my favorite part. Look away now. That's what she looks like. I honestly love this. I don't know if there's anything for somebody who likes the way this looks, but I'm her. So I'm gonna set this aside. And now for the milks. I have sweetened condensed milk here. I have evaporated milk. And of course, some good old 2% milk. Let's adjust the elephant in the room, okay? If you didn't believe it, this is your proof. In Canada, we have milk in a bag. And we also have carton milk but this is also just really convenient. In one bag, you get three liters. It's sold in one big bag, and in the big bag, there are three separate bags, and in the three separate bags, there is one liter of milk. So in total, three liters of milk in one big bag of milk. Anyway, so I actually like to start off with the evaporated milk and the sweetened condensed milk. You can get whatever brand you'd like. Uh, honestly, whatever was cheap, that's what I bought, because I think we know by now that I stay complaining about how fucking expensive everything is. So we put in the entire evaporated milk can as well as the entire sweetened condensed milk can. This is a lot. This makes quite a bit. As you can see, we're at three cups. So the reason why I add the 2% milk at the end is because I really want the other two milks to be the ones that stand out. Realistically, the only thing that that 2% milk adds is the fact that you can say it's a tres leches cake, it's a three milk cake. If you actually want something with low gusto, then the evaporated milk and the sweetened condensed milk is what's gonna give you flavor. So in total, this is four cups of milk. I have a whisk just so that the sweet and condensed milk gets incorporated with both milks. But I can tell you for free that all of this is not going inside the cake. Cool. So bringing this cake back, now we just pour. And this is also like one of my favorite things about doing this cake is just seeing it get all absorbed. 
Now this is another thing that takes a bit of time because you would think that like, oh, after the second pour, she can't handle anymore. Wrong. You have to let it absorb, then we can start adding more. I will say though, typically by the second pour, it takes a little bit longer for it to absorb. Once again, a bit time consuming. Also, if you are doing this cake, do not be alarmed if your cake is dry. I find that the drier the cake is, the better it will absorb your liquid. Pause. And just keep on waiting. Waiting, waiting on the world to change. It has taken a little bit longer for this third pour to sort of seep in, which means that we're pretty much done after this next pour. And then just one more thing, we are going to be adding some whipped cream on top. I've spared you from watching how I make my whipped cream again. If you missed my last video, my strawberry shortcake video where I made whipped cream on camera, go ahead and watch that. It's on my baking playlist on my channel, but the entire premise is basically whipping cream, sugar, vanilla. That's it. This is gonna be the last pour. There's about a cup left. This is gonna take a while to be absorbed. I'm gonna clean up and by the time that I get back, hopefully most of it will be absorbed and we can add the whipped cream on top. All right, I've cleaned up. I would let this sit a little bit longer, but I'm tired. I wanna watch Sailor Moon right now. This is sitting in the fridge overnight anyway, so it's gonna have a lot more time to seep into the cake. And also my whipped cream. She's, she's melting out here. And the only space that I made in the fridge is for this cake, so I can't put her in the fridge. Normally I would make this look a lot prettier, but I don't wanna. That is it for this week's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed another little baking video with me. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye.